What do you get when you take a young Aussie vet and move him from the beaches of sunny Queensland to the Royal Borough of Richmond on London's historic River Thames? Hello. Hi, guys. The British people love animals. Hey, you miss mummy. For me, they're kindred spirits. Caring for creatures great and small, there's never a dull moment for Dr. Scott Miller. That is far too forward, I'm afraid. And grateful owners certainly know who to turn to in their hour of need. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Scott cares, and I don't think you can fake that. And normally, as a vet, you know, you can have a... A sort of a line. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. A tough northerner and supposed to be a tough Australian. And look what dogs do to him. This big-hearted boy from Oz is making his mark in one of the biggest cities in the world. He's going down the pole. Going down the pole with his mates. <laughs> I doff my cap to the doctor. Ah, that's a bit too much time here, mate. On this episode of Vet on the Hill, fall in love with brave Jimmy, a survivor of a shocking case of animal cruelty. This dog was left in a cage pretty much to rot. This knee joint isn't just inflamed, it's destroyed. It was horrendous. It looked like a bomb had gone off in it. Scott is called in to solve Rico's separation anxiety uh, he's very, very vocal, and I'm amazed that the neighbours aren't complaining. Are you scared of the big dog? Is it that? Tiny Isabella faces the biggest battle of her life. The notion that we might lose her is terrifying us. And you're invited to a pug party, all in the name of science. Tea cakes and pugs. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Today I'm driving out to Berkshire, which is to the west of London, and I'm going to visit a place called the Border Collie Spot. It's run by Jill, who I absolutely love and I honestly believe should be known as the patron saint of dogs. She always takes on dogs that no one else wants. Curly. Curly! I suppose I've been rescuing dogs for about 20 years, but it's one of those things, once you've started doing it, it's so hard to ever stop, because I know if I stopped doing it, so many dogs would die. Good boy. How can I stop? <laughs> I have rather a special case here that I'd like you to have a look at. Okay. Jill's about to introduce Scott to a victim of extreme long-term neglect. Hello, buddy. This is Jimmy. He's come from a, a hoarding situation and he's got a big problem with his hind legs. Jimmy was found locked up in a small cage covered in his own excrement. The three-year-old Border Collie had been forced to spend his life in a crouched position, unable to stand up. And how long do you think he was there for? I think he was born there. Oh I don't my know, but I think goodness. he was. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy. I've had the misfortune of seeing quite a number of cruelty cases in my career. That's a good boy. But Jimmy boy. was off the scale when it came to just plain neglect. This dog was left in a cage pretty much to rot. Come on, Jim Jim. Good boy. Good boy. I think what angers me the most when it comes to animal cruelty is that these are innocent creatures that haven't asked to be owned by these horrendous people. They haven't deserved what's happened to them and it makes me want to defend them and defend them I will. Come on. You know what he walks like? He walks like he's on hot coals, doesn't yeah, he? Like he's yeah, right up yeah. on, on his toes, yeah, like walking yeah. really, really gingerly. Yeah. The left leg is definitely weaker than yeah. the right. You can see he's actually lifting that yeah. one up. Poor guy. I actually think I'm getting worse as I get older at coping with it because emotionally it's draining. 
There's hardly a day goes by that I don't shed tears over these dogs. All right, then, let's pop you in the back of the car. We'll go and see Michael. Scott has made an appointment for Jimmy with specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. I think Jill has already developed a really strong bond with Jimmy. She really has a soft spot for him, you can tell. And I know that it's really worrying for her. Good boy. He is going to need a lot of complex work, and she knows that. See you soon, Jimmy. So, of course, she's very nervous about me taking him, but I know she trusts my judgment, and I am really taking him to the best place possible. At home in Isleworth, it's an exciting day for Michael and Anderson. These doting fathers are hoping Chihuahuas Oscar and Isabella will make them grandfathers. We'd like to have little puppies because their characters are so strong. We would like to see their characters mesh into one little small puppy. Just for you? No? Nothing? Shall I give it to Oscar? Oscar is the boy. He's always active and playing, running around, he run after dogs, playing with the ball. He's mischievous. <laughs> Isabella is a little princess. A real lady. She's more delicate in everything she does. I cannot imagine a life without them. No, me neither. We're totally in love with our dogs. Come on. This afternoon, Michael's taking Isabella to the St. Margaret's Clinic to find out if they can make their dream become a reality. <laughs> and have his more Oscars than Isabella, be yeah. kind of, you know, great. That would be the bonus, the cherry on the cake. I'm a lady, I'm a princess. Hello, mate. Hey, Scott. How's things all right? Great to see you. Yeah, you too. Good. You too. So let me show you a very special patient. This is Jimmy. Scott's arrived at the Cherry Tree Veterinary Practice near Marlow. He's hoping specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton can do something to help Jimmy's badly damaged legs. He was rescued from a place where he was basically kept in a crate his entire life. No way. And when they found him, he was absolutely covered in his own fecal matter to the point where they had to shear him like a sheep. And now he's got this very strange curved sort of spine and his knees feel terrible. Two big swollen knees. Did he move much? Oh dear. I know Michael very well. When he's looking at Jimmy, I can see that he is pretty shocked. Crikey, this knee is just something else, isn't it? You can just feel it grating. That is not very nice at all. As you move those knees around, it's, I mean, it's bone on bone, and it grates and it crunches, and it's just horrible. Oh, no, man. You won't be impressed. You see, he's real he's tucked up, isn't he? Carrying that back left, isn't he? Yeah, he's been very brave, isn't he? Both those knees, particularly the left side, they're toast. There's nothing you can do. There's, there's going to be no cartilage in those knees. They don't move very much. They, they've got to be painful. OK, so we'll just have to step outside, get x-rays. The extent of the problem becomes even clearer on the x-rays. Straight away, that does not look very nice at all. It's terrible. Sclerosis here, effusion here. So that is horrible. They would, they would make it onto the rostrum of the worst knees ever, yes. Knee replacement would be the best option. If it goes well, that's the best option for the dog, no question. The other option, which we can do if a knee replacement didn't go right, the other salvage option is to just fuse it, get the dog out of discomfort. Can you make it up? Good boy. He's just the nicest dog, isn't he? And he's had a hell of a time by the sound of things. We can certainly help him out and fusion, knee replacement, they're the options. Michael, great to see you as always. Oh, Thanks so much for your no help worries. and advice. Yeah, yeah, and I will course. pass all that on to Jill, yeah, and um, I'm sure she'll be in touch very soon. Yeah, sure. OK. Yeah. Cheers. Excellent. See ya.
At St. Margaret's, Michael's bringing Isabella in for a checkup with Joe and Emma. He's hoping his chihuahua will be given the go-ahead to have puppies. Hi, I've got Bella for you. Hi, oh, hello. How are you? Fine. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. How's Isabella? She's on heat at the moment. So, so I see. Isabella is sporting some fantastic pink party pants, shall we call them? A lady has to maintain her dignity. Okay. <laughs> so I'm all for the underwear. Okay. <laughs> so definitely in season, no yes. doubt about that. Yes. Okay. Fine. And I was thinking of you know, breeding her and I'd like to know if this is the right time and get some advice and feedback. Okay, so if Emma can help me out, we'll start at the top and we will work our way down. Her teeth are looking good, she's a really great weight, but I'm listening to her chest and I can hear there's a problem. Okay, so I can hear she's got a, a, a heart murmur. A heart murmur is an abnormal sound that we can hear. What I can pick up on the stethoscope is instead of just a lub-dub, lub-dub heart sound, there's a whoosh in between the two noises. So we hear lub-whoosh-dub. I was shocked when she told me that. I always thought that Isabella was a little healthy little dog. And now I come here and I find out that she's got a little heart murmur. Oh, I don't want Isabella to have a poorly heart. Okay. Yes, I know. Oh. So that's something um, that I think we should look into before we think about breeding her, because we want to make sure that her heart can cope with having a pregnancy. And we want to also make sure that it's not something that she could pass on to her babies as well. Isabella will now need to go to the practice's referral hospital, the Royal Veterinary College, for further tests. I know Michael really wants to breed Isabella and have some puppies, but it really does rest on the ultrasound scan of the heart to see what's going on there. Oh, well, let's hope that everything's OK with the scan and that we can breed her. Meanwhile, if you need someone to look after Isabella, I will be more than happy to do so. <laughs> She's my little baby. <laughs> We need to chat about you, <laughs> don't we? As we thought, the changes are fairly severe. Both of his knees are exceptionally arthritic and abnormal after the years of neglect and well, cruelty that he's yeah. gone through. Scott has brought rescue dog Jimmy back to Jill's sanctuary. After a series of x-rays, there is a lot to discuss. The important thing with the joint is you should have a gap between the two bones, uh, and he doesn't. His are wedged together tightly. It's rubbed away all the protective surfaces of those joints. That's awful, isn't it? And that's where yeah. the pain's coming from. Jimmy's left back leg is the immediate priority. There are two options, a fusion of the joint, leaving the border collie with limited movement, or a custom-made knee replacement which could cost up to £10,000. Michael very generously has offered his services for free. Wow. So have you got yeah. some big penny jars that we can yeah, start shaking? We'll, uh, we'll do it. Yeah. I tell you we will. <laughs> I never spend any money on myself. Everything goes on the animals. I've never been on an aeroplane. I don't possess a passport, so... <laughs> My life is here with the animals. Good. Good boy. What do you think yeah. we can do to try and raise the money? Well, at this moment, I'm not sure, but I know I will raise it. And if I don't, it'll have to go on the credit card. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> she's so dedicated to the animals in her care, she's going to do the best of them no matter what. So even when she doesn't have the money, she's thinking she's going to throw it on a credit card. What a woman. Here, Jimmy, <laughs> Mum's buying. I need a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I need some too. <laughs> hey, brilliant, there we go. You and I, shoe shopping, poor Jimmy's leg. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's leg comes first. We yeah. agree on that one. Yeah. Calm down. Recall. 
think he's getting stressed a bit now. At the Richmond practice, Leon and Agnes are hoping Scott can help six-year-old Rico. Their miniature schnauzer can't be left alone without constantly barking and crying. He gets very hyper, he starts panting, and it just gets into that state that, um, you know, it's very dangerous for him as well. He's got a condition of epilepsy, and we just don't want to have that happen, that he falls down and, and has the, the fits when we are not there. What kind of dog is he? I mean, he's, he's a lovely dog. He loves people. He's not aggressive at all. It's just his anxiety about, like, if someone leaves him at home alone, he doesn't like that, he gets very anxious, cries the whole time. So can you tell me a little bit about little Rico's history? Yeah, so basically he's a family dog. He was with my dad since he was a puppy uh, for about two and a half years. And then my dad unfortunately passed away. And then after my grandma couldn't look after him, he stayed with my brother. Okay, and where was this? Uh, in Poland. Oh, wow. Uh, we didn't want him to go to another home that he doesn't know or go with other people he doesn't know or, you know, end up somewhere which is not nice for him. So we decided uh, we'll adopt him and bring him to the UK. We were thinking of flying him over, but we know his anxiety and it's going to be a lot stressful for him. So um, I decided we drive to pick wow. him up. Wow. Yeah. He drove to Poland to yeah. pick up a dog. Wow, that's dedication. Yeah. There's not many people that would drive a thousand miles and back to pick up a dog, and they've done just that. So I know that Rico is in very, very safe hands. Uh, we just need to help them to get over this little behavioural glitch. Does he have any medical problems, any sort of medical well, concerns? He, I know that my brother said he had uh, epilepsy. Um, so oh, he had really? uh, twice this year. We've got a nervous dog who's now showing signs of seizures. And when a dog is nervous, their seizure threshold, the point where they have fits, is lowered. So he's more likely to have them. So it's very, very important that we get on top of his nervousness, um, A, so that he doesn't have any more seizures, and B, so that you guys get to have a life. Yeah. <laughs> Rico doesn't know anything else but having 100% human interaction at all times. And sadly, when you are a working couple, you need to leave the house at some point, and that's where the problems are going to start. If it's OK with you, I think that we need to see this behaviour in action. So um, can I invite myself to your house? Yeah, of sure. Of course, yeah. <laughs> hey, Scotty says relax. Look at this dog. Are you scared of the big dog, Isabella? At the Royal Veterinary College, Michael's arrived with Isabella for her appointment with cardiologist Dr. Anne Kurosawa. Isabella Betancourt. Hi. Hi, hello. How are you? Yeah, nice to meet you. Today, he will find out if Isabella's heart murmur will prevent her from having puppies. Do you want to come on in for yes. back? We were always dreaming of having a litter with them, and if the part problem is going to be an issue, and it is going to be devastating for us. And we'll see you later, OK? Bye. Oh, Good girl. There we go. Oh, good girl. Her health is more important than anything else. She's our baby girl, you know, and we love her to bits. Right, it's going to be a little cold. The scans soon show that breeding Isabella will be the least of Michael's worries. It does look a little bit fused. The doctors have discovered Isabella has a severe abnormality in one of her heart valves. She can go into congestive heart failure, and in the worst case scenario, she may even experience sudden cardiac death. Mm -hmm. We did find some birth defects with her heart. Um, Because her disease is severe, she is at risk of having collapse episodes. In worst case scenario, she may even die from this disease. It was really hard blow hearing this news from the vet today. I feel heartbroken. Although there is no cure for Isabella's condition, there is a procedure which, if it works, would allow the blood to flow more easily around her heart by opening up the narrowed valve. It will be a difficult decision for Michael. You never want to hear that one of your children is sick. 
without her doing this next procedure, we might not have her for very long. Back at Richmond, vet nurse Gemma is expecting some special guests. So we've got a pug party today. It's great fun. We've got tea and cakes. There's lovely cupcakes for the owners and obviously doggy treats for the pugs. There are pugs everywhere and they're having a great time. It's madness. <laughs> it's an opportunity for proud owners to indulge in a little mutual appreciation. Something about pugs, they, they have a good effect on people, I think. I got my first one 15 years ago and I've been hooked ever since because they are real funny creatures. <laughs> Pugs are chaos wherever you go. <laughs> but it's not all about tea and cupcakes. And thank you so much for coming here today. I'm Rick, Rick Sanchez. We um, are yep. very lucky to be joined by Rick, who is a top ophthalmologist from the Royal Veterinary College. As you know, I have a special interest in pugs and their eye problems. They have a problem with their eyes that we call pigmentary keratitis or keratopathy, where they uh, develop a sheet of pigment over their eye. And it can potentially, in some cases, cause blindness. And so we're following like, a large group of pugs and see how prevalent the problem is in Britain. Little is known about the cause of the condition, and Rick's hoping this research will help develop effective treatment. So we'll be examining their eyes, and we'll be going into the examination room, and we'll go one by one. So if uh, you're all ready, we can get started. <laughs> me, me, pick me! This is the first time we're going to be meeting Rick. I'm quite excited. I've heard a lot about him. This is Tilly. Yeah, this is Tilly. And Tilly is how old? 15 months 15 now. months. Lovely. First up is a test to measure Tilly's tear production. Good girl. Good girl, Tilly. You're a good girl. Not enough tears cause those cute, bulging eyes to dry out, making them red and sore. That's, that's fine. So Tilly's my first pug that I haven't had any eye problems with yet. Oh, so that's amazing. How many pugs have you had? She's my fourth pug She's now. She's your fourth pug, wow. So we're hoping that she continues. That's... Charlotte hopes Tilly won't go down the same path as her older pug. Jasper had surgery about two years ago now, so it is something that we have to constantly monitor every two to three months with an ophthalmologist. He's on eye drops twice a day, every day, for the rest of his life. Now, the all-important test for pigment in Tilly's eyes. Yeah, no pigment on the cornea really is amazing. And that looks really good as well. Good girl. It looks really, really good. Mind you, Tilly's very young, and so yes. that can change over time. And so I always tell people, shine a light in their eyes over time, keep an eye on that, okay. yeah, and talk to the vets about okay. that. Good girl, Tilly. <laughs> good girl. OK, who's next? <laughs> hey, Leon, how are you doing? Hi, Agnes. Wow, I can hear the boy yes. is already kicking off. <laughs> come in, come in. Thank you very come much. Come in. Oh my goodness. He's very, very vocal, and I'm amazed that the neighbours aren't complaining. Scott's arrival at Agnes and Leon's home has immediately brought Rico's anxiety issues to the surface. Hello, champ. How are you going? But Hello. his frantic barking is all show. Straight away, he greets me very, very positively. He's a really friendly, sweet dog, and he loves lots of cuddles. You're one affectionate little fellow, aren't you? Hey, you like a cuddle and a smooch, don't you? Well, it's very good to see that he's a very sociable and affectionate dog. Yeah. What I really need, though, is to see how he behaves when you're not here. And then we can just understand the problem a little more. <laughs> to be able to see Rico behave normally, I need to do a bit of surveillance. Leon, you and I will go next door and we'll watch yep. the footage. Agnes, you're going to be doing exactly what you do when you leave the house. So you're just going to be putting your shoes on, grabbing your keys, grabbing your bag, and then leaving. And then we're going to be watching uh, little Rico and see how he behaves. Sound good? Perfect. Excellent. All right, let's, let's get stuck in. 
This is a fantastic house because I actually get a live feed as to how the dog is behaving. Um, Feels like we're in mission control. Yes. Should we grab a seat? No, of course. we need some popcorn. Yeah. Interestingly, he's already looking at the door. Yeah. Just by her putting her shoes on. Correct. So he's relating the two already. Okay. Oh, Stay. Good boy. Closing the door. It's quiet. For about four or five seconds. Yes, that's a, that's it. <laughs> she really gets pretty stressed pretty quick, doesn't he? I mean, he's gone from just a little bit of whimpering yeah. to barking to howling. Yeah, I mean, he, he's really going for it. We have a little bit of entropia, just grade one. It's about one sixth of the lower eyelid. Back at the pug party, the serious scientific research is continuing into pug eye problems. And then just brush border between eight and ten, and she has some pigment growing into the cornea on this eye. But while Rick still has plenty of examinations to complete in the consult room, Outside, the other major event of the day is now underway. The fancy dress competition. As a former fashion designer, Gemma's the obvious choice as judge. So I have got the really difficult task of deciding who the winner is of the fancy dress costume. We have got a little monster with Hank. We've got Rastafarian. <laughs> We've got Goldilocks and the Three Bears. We've got a biker chick. We've got it all going on. I don't know who I'm going to pick. You look awesome, Jas, don't you? I think the winner has to be the collaborative threesome, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. <laughs> But no one is going home empty poured. Everybody gets a toothbrush tube oh, for competing. A perfect end to a perfect party. <laughs> so it's great to be able to come together and I suppose celebrate our pugginess. Hank! Oh, hi. Tea cakes and pugs, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Rico hates being left at home alone, and whenever his owners go out, the miniature schnauzer barks uncontrollably. Scott needs to come up with an answer. He's asked one owner, Agnes, to leave the apartment, while he and the other owner, Leon, continue their secret surveillance. How long have you seen him actually bark for? Um, we've, we've but an hour. All he can think of when Agnes leaves the house is I'm just going to scream until she comes back. After observing Rico's reaction, Scott phones Agnes and asks her to come back. Come now. Come down, Rico. And one mistake come she down. makes straight away is immediately giving Rico lots of attention. And that's understandable, that's human nature. If an animal's upset, you're going to want to try and make it feel better. But actually what she's doing is unwittingly reinforcing the barking. I bark, mummy comes back and gives me a cuddle. Well, guys, I think it's pretty clear from today that he has a condition called separation anxiety. Uh, and the reason that he's developed that is purely and simply stress. I mean, he's lost his primary care in your dad, yeah. and he's driven over a thousand miles to come to the UK. And even though you guys are such dedicated caring owners, it's still a new environment. With the added complication of Rico's epilepsy, a solution needs to be found quickly. We need to... There's two big words I'm going to throw at you, OK? So the first one is called counter conditioning, and that's basically getting him to start thinking positively about something he thought about before as negative. So you living the house, that sucks. He hates it. Yeah. He does not want you to do that. So what we need to try and do is encourage him to think positively. So what you're going to be doing from now on is you're going to give him something to chew or something to play with just before you're about to leave. And so then he can start thinking positively because normally, particularly as boys, 
We love it when we get food and it's gonna make us feel positive and feel happy. These are treat balls. Basically, you can pop his normal food in there. Yeah and it rolls around. And then he's encouraged to look for his food. It's investigative. It makes him think about how he can get it out. So it's problem solving, using his brain. But also, the food that you give him can be entertainment. And this is the way to make that happen. Then after him getting used to various treats and toys, then the next thing is something called desensitization. You, what you need to try and do is to actually ignore him for about 15 minutes before you leave and about 15 minutes after you arrive so that you leaving the house and returning isn't exciting. It's actually really boring. Yeah. And boredom for dogs is actually an effective means of getting them to get over a behaviour. Agnes and Leon have to earn a living. So if Rico continues to behave this way and they start getting neighbours complaining, who knows, the worst case scenario would be they'd have to rehome him. And I really, really hope that, that won't be the end of the story for them. Two weeks later at the RVC, tiny Isabella is being prepped for heart surgery. Good girl. Professor Virginia Luis Fuentes will be overseeing the procedure to open Isabella's fused valve. If we don't do anything about it, there's a risk that she could suffer irregular heart rhythms, and those could be fatal. Or in the longer term, she could be at risk of developing heart failure with fluid buildup in her abdomen. After dropping Isabella off for her crucial procedure, owner Michael is finding it very hard to leave. The notion that we might lose her is terrifying us. Since Isabella's initial heart scan, Michael and his partner Anderson have suffered a tragic loss. Isabella's little mate, Oscar, was hit by a car. It's been a rough two weeks for us. We both have taken the death of Oscar very badly. And, you know, with this pressure of Isabella going through this very painful procedure, it's been very tough, very tough. We are completely shattered. It's been hard for Isabella because she's been pining, because she's lost her lifetime mate. I honestly think that the comfort is that Oscar's a little guardian angel looking after her. It's okay, it's a good girl. Hopefully she'll pull through and and we'll have a good result at the end of the day. Alright, good girl, it's okay. <laughs> He's saying, hello, Jimmy, welcome. It's also been two weeks since Jimmy was taken in by Jill at her rescue sanctuary in Berkshire. You are such a good boy. Yes, this is fun. For the first time in a life of neglect and cruelty, the three-year-old Border Collie is finally surrounded by love. It must seem to him very strange, the fact that people are being kind to him. I think he's becoming happier every day. After being kept in a cage where he couldn't stand up, the bones in Jimmy's back legs now grind against each other, causing him chronic pain whenever he moves. Jimmy's temperament is wonderful. He has never, ever growled or snapped, which is amazing. Good boy. Maybe he knows we're going to help him, I don't know, but he's a wonderful little dog. Hi, oh, Jill. hi, Scott. How are you? I'm fine, thank Mwah. you. Mwah. Oh. Good to see you. Yeah, come in, I've got you a cup of Ooh, tea. Oh, lovely, thank you. <laughs> Later that day, Scott arrives to take Jimmy for his major surgery. But first, he wants to reassure Jill. Someone looks comfortable. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I think he's made himself at home, don't he you? He really does. Who <laughs> has got his paws under the table, hey? You have. 
Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> Over the past weeks, specialist Michael Hamilton has carried out extensive tests. You see the little fibres there, what's left of a, of a cruciate. Signs of long-term infection have been discovered, and it's now clear Jimmy's knees are so badly damaged that the knee replacement is simply too risky to perform. That's left a knee fusion as the only option. Well, I think the procedure that Michael and you have decided to move forward with is a great one because it has far less complications. Yeah. So as much as it would have been wonderful to turn him into the bionic dog, what we need to do is turn him into a comfortable dog. Yeah. And this procedure is going to do that yeah. without breaking the bank and breaking yeah. you and meaning yeah. you can keep going on with your great work. Yeah. And really, at the end of the day, all we want is for him to be pain-free. I think it's the right decision, yeah. 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 I have to be determined for my dogs because I'm the only one they've got. Oh, <laughs> you big pudding, <laughs> hey? Say goodbye to Jill. Oh. Say goodbye. Hey? Hi, Jimmy. Good Say boy. Bye. Their life is in my hands, really. It is, but I wish I could do more. I do. You've got your chair back, Violet. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Right, Jimmy, the big day has arrived. Yeah. No, I mean. Mate. So, plan is we're going to fuse his knee. The whole point is it's not going to be sore once we're done. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. it gives um, some stability, takes away the pain. Yeah, exactly. And he's going to be a happier dog. Mm -hmm. Boy. But no one's going anywhere until x rays confirm the surgery has been a success. So, that's a straight on view of his ankle, that's a straight on view of a hip joint, and that's a straight on view of a knee. So, I mean, that is, that's, I mean, that's a Perfectly straight leg, it looks great. Really pleased with that. Mm, just call Jill soon, hey, call mummy, until everything's gone well. A very long surgery, but that knee has been fused within an inch of its life, isn't it? Yes, it has. But this is the start of a good new life for you, hey? Yeah. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good. My goodness, it's very quiet in here. It's been two weeks since Scott's first visit to see the stressed out Rico, and a lot has changed. No barking. Goodness me, the change in you, hey? Are you being a good boy, hey? So far, so good. But Scott needs to see what happens when the schnauzer is left alone. Rico is very calm and very relaxed in the house with us there, and that's fantastic. But I'm really intrigued to see the footage that Agnes and Leon have captured of Rico when they do leave the house. So this is the bit um, we filmed this morning. So this is Agnes coming in. So I'm just coming in basically, getting him occupied with some food as well, like you mentioned, with the little toys, so he can get occupied with his mind, trying to get the food out. Good boy. The food ball works exceptionally well to distract Rico from when his owners are going to leave the apartment. But also, it ties him out. It makes him work for his food and also work out the way in which he can get the food out of the ball, which is tiring out his mind as well as his body. So it's a perfect, perfect tool for Rico. So this is pretty much when we're kind of preparing ourselves to go to work. You know, the dog will still be in the room with us. And then we'll just give him a command just to sit and stay. And basically just not interacting with him much so he can just get himself settled. It's difficult to stay away from him. He's a lovely, cute dog and he wants your love. So you kind of automatically want to give him the love. Good idea, nice and calm, getting prepared for that leave. So that's yeah. good, that's perfect. Nice and calm and, yeah. and close it. This is interesting. And this is where I think the most improvement we've made where, yeah. you know, he's in his bed, he's staying. This is great. I mean, this is a calm, relaxed dog. You've left, he's like, eh, I know yeah. they'll be back. <laughs> Rico, that is so good. They've proved that old dogs can learn new tricks and they've taught this dog that it's okay to be by yourself sometimes. Good boy. Here you go, good boy. It's really good to see the training, the discipline, it actually works. Good boy. Hey, Isabella. 
Good girl, good girl. Take care. Good girl. Ah. Isabella is now back at home with Michael and Anderson after recovering from her heart surgery. It's been a real tough time for all of us. You know, it's really been challenging. You know, with her surgery, Oscar dying, and it's been really challenging for everyone. You now he meant the world to me, you know. I just can't explain. The memory he left behind is really strong. You cannot forget it. But life is what it is. We just pray like you know, he's in a good place. And he's going to be always part of her life, it doesn't matter what happened. Thank you. It will be three weeks before Isabella's follow-up scan. But so far, all the signs are positive. She recovered so quickly after the surgery. Sometimes it looks like she didn't even go through that big ordeal. I think she arrived from the hospital. She was already jumping. She's much more alive. I think she has more energy now than she had before. Thank you. I'm just happy it's all over and she's happy and healthy and that's what's important to us at the moment. He's so glad she's doing better now, yeah? Well, I think this is one contented pooch. What do you think? Isn't it just, yeah, amazing. And Scott has dropped in on Jill to check on Jimmy's progress. He's so much happier in himself. It's just incredible that we've been able to do this for him. Come on, let's see how you're going. Good boy. The surgery is a success. Yes, it's a salvage procedure. He has a knee that's now fused, but the pain is gone. And that was the whole point of this, to give him a nice pain-free life and allow him to enjoy himself for the first time in his life. What's his future hold? Well, we have a wonderful home lined up for him. She's a wonderful person. She's very patient and caring and... Everything Jim yeah, deserves. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be adored for the rest of his life, and I know that's absolutely what he deserves. It's been such a great journey, and a great journey with you as well. Yeah. Until the next time we've got another sad case we have to fix, <laughs> eh? <laughs> then the dream team will be back together again. Yeah, eh? I hope so. Cheers. 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 <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Jim. <laughs>